Hello and welcome to this video series on learning surface modeling in Fusion. This is a three part video series for beginners. And before we begin, I'd just like to say that surface modeling builds on the techniques learned in solid modeling. So if you haven't seen my beginner's guide to Fusion yet, then I recommend watching that first and then coming back to this video. In this first video, I'm going to be explaining, first of all, what surface modeling is and when it's best to use it. And you will also start to learn loft, patch, reversing normals and also stitching. And in this tutorial series, we're going to be creating a car spoiler. So the first thing that I want to show you is the difference between solid modeling and also surface modeling. So first of all, I'm going to come up here and click on create sketch. And first of all, I'm just going to show you an example. So don't worry about copying me yet. So I've started my sketch here and I'm just going to draw a line from the center point. Now, the thing with the solid is that we always need to close the sketch. And what I mean by close the sketch is that if I just quickly draw this like this, for an example, you can see that it goes blue inside. And this means that the sketch is closed and that would allow us to create a solid body. But the difference now is that if I delete these and finish the sketch, like for example, if I come over here and try to extrude this as a solid, you can see that it won't let me. So I'm just going to cancel that. But then if I come over here to the surface, so you can get to that by clicking up here in this ribbon on the surfaces here, that if I use the extrude tool in the surface, you can see that I can actually extrude this up. So now I'm going to extrude this up. And you can see it here as a surface body. You can see this because it's orange and it matches the orange here. And you'll see that this actually has no thickness to it. It's actually at 0.0 millimeters thick. So if I tried to 3D print this or something like that, it just wouldn't work because it's got no thickness. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I come over here and then I press thicken and then I move this out. So I'm just gonna create this at 10 millimeters of thickness. And now you can see it actually hides that surface and changes this to a body. So now this is something that's actually got a thickness to it. And that's one of the main differences between solid and surface modeling. And the reason that you would use surfaces over these solid bodies is because it can create more organic and complex shapes. Things that you couldn't really make with solid modeling because solid modeling is a lot more geometric. So I'm just going to delete these out first. And I'm also going to delete this sketch as well. And now we're going to start with our car spoiler. And this spoiler is just something that I created to practice. I'm not sure how good it actually would be at aerodynamics. So hopefully Adrian Newey isn't watching this video. So you can start following along with me now. So what I'm going to do first is press on the save button. And I'm just going to call this one for myself one just to make it easier. But you can save the file with the name that you like and also choose the location that you like. And then I'm just going to press on save. So now we've got that saved and I'm going to come up here and click on new component and I'm going to create a new component just to make it easier. And I'm just going to call this one again, but again, you can call this the name that you like. And now we've got the model started. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to insert a canvas and I'm going to insert that from my computer, but I'm going to put it on the screen now. So you can take a screenshot of this and use it in your design. Okay, so once you've got that image, then just load it and choose this face here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to leave it at this size for now, but that's okay because we're going to resize it. So I'm going to click on right on the view cube and then I'm going to drop this down and go into canvases and I'm going to click on this picture. So I right click and then I press calibrate and I'm just going to try the best that I can to click on the edges here and to create a straight line. And I want to make this 460 millimeters. And then I hit enter. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out and this is a cross section of our spoiler. You'll see what I mean when we create it. And now I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to press edit canvas and I'm going to use a square to put it in the middle as much as I can. So yeah, something like that looks good. And then I press on OK. And now I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to click on the sketch here and then again, sketch on this plane here. And I'm actually going to use the fit point spline to draw around this. So I'm going to take one point here and start with that. And 
And then I'm just going to move this up, I think one point around here. And the real key with the spline tool is to really try and use as little points as you possibly can in order to draw your shape. And I'm just going to adjust this afterwards so we can get this nice and accurate. So I'm going to draw one point there and then I'm going to come back around to here. And then I'm going to hit enter. So now I'm just going to make some small adjustments and get this as close as I can to the shape. Yeah, that looks good. Actually, I'll try to even these out just a little bit. Yeah, nice. So now I'm not actually going to close this shape, just so I can show you another example for surface modeling. So I'm going to finish that sketch here and I'm going to turn this back around. And now that I've drawn that, I can actually take this canvas back off. Oh, actually, there's one more thing that I want to do with this. So I'm going to drop down this sketch here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click on edit this sketch because this is actually blue lines and I do want to fix this one into position just so I have some constraints on it. So I'm going to click on this padlock up here and then I'm going to press enter to fix this and then I'll click on finish sketch. So now we've got this one, what I actually want to do is to create two offset planes. So I'm going to click on offset plane and I'm going to click on this plane here and I'm going to move this backwards to minus 800. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other way. So I click this plane and I move this forwards to 800. Now, we've already drawn our sketch, so this is gonna make this easier. I'm just going to drag over this, press Command C to copy it, or Control C if you're on a PC, and I'm actually going to draw on this plane. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on Create Sketch. And then I'm just going to press Command V. And this one, we want to come down. And let's move this down by 10 millimeters. But I also want to move it across as well. So I'm going to do that by minus 25 millimeters. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lock this. So I'm going to choose Fix and then hit Enter to fix it. And then press Finish Sketch. Then I'm just going to copy this over to the other side. So I'm going to do that. I press Command C. And then I come to this side and create a sketch. And I press Command V. And it already copies it into the same location. And then I'm going to lock this. And then I press Finish Sketch. Oh, sorry, actually, I need to lock this first. So I'm going to right click, press on Edit Sketch. And then I'll highlight the whole thing. I'll fix it, hit Enter. And then I'll finish the sketch. Okay, so now we've got our three drawings and they're locked into position. I want to come over here and click on surface. And we're going to create a loft. And this loft will work in the same way that it does with a solid body. So we click on loft. And I'm going to start on this left hand side here. And I'm going to click on this one. And then I click on this one. And then I click on this last one. And you can see here, this actually drawn quite a complex shape because it's coming down and also curving at the same time. So if I move this around, now you can see that there's actually this little gap here. And we wouldn't have been able to do that with a solid, but we do want to close this gap. So we're going to click on create, then we're going to click on loft. And I'm going to loft between these two lines. And then I press on OK. Now, we've got these two pieces here. So if we look at these bodies, you can see that we've actually got two here and we want to join these together. So what we can do is draw this box across like this. And then I'm going to click on stitch and the stitch basically joins two surfaces together like it's actually stitching them together. So I'm going to click on that. And now you can see that it goes green here. And these are the things that will stitch together. And this one has gone red, but don't worry about that for now because we're going to close that gap in a minute. So that's okay. Now, the lower that you can get this tolerance, the better, because the tighter it's gonna be. But if you've got a really complex model, you might have to increase this just to be able to get it to stitch together. But for now, we're just going to click on okay. And you can see that it joins the two together. And now we only have one body. So the next thing that I want to show you is if we click on create and then we click on patch here. Where I click on these edges here, when this goes black, you can see that the patch tool closes up these holes. 
and it's just kind of putting like a cap on the itch. So I just want to click OK because we've patched that up. And now you may be wondering why this has gone yellow and it's not grey. Well, Fusion didn't know which way around to put it. And the yellow is actually the back of the surface. So we should always be seeing the grey side as the grey side is the outside surface. And this just helps when stitching things together or it tells Fusion which way to start and extrude from. So we want to change that. So we click on this yellow and then we click on modify. And here we can press reverse normals. And we've already got that face selected. So we can press OK. And now you can see that it's flipped it to the correct way around. And then we're just going to finish this off by clicking on create and patching the other side up. And you can see this one's already come out the right way around. So we're going to click on OK. And then we're going to click on save. And that's the outline of the spoiler drawn. In the next video, we're going to be using surfaces to create loads of design details. So see you in the next one.